Today we are going to talk about seven iRacing tracks that have been destroyed in real life that iRacing has preserved through their laser scanning technology. At number seven, we have the original super truck track in iRacing, Wild West Motorsports Park. Added alongside the Pro 4 and the Pro 2 truck in iRacing in May of 2019, only two years later, Wild West Motorsports Park announced that they were shutting down. Located only 10 minutes outside of Reno, this track doesn't seem to have been torn up and demolished yet, but it has permanently closed. The track itself is a classic experience for anybody venturing to the dirt road side of things in iRacing, as this track is essentially just five hairpins with crazy elevation changes. For better or worse, you'll see dive bombs, cars flipping, beating, banging, no one's gonna finish without damage, but it's a blast. One of the most fun experiences you can have on iRacing in my opinion. So even though you may not be able to see a race in real life anymore on this track, it'll be a mainstay on the iRacing dirt road calendar for years to come as its physical racing is beloved by many and it's really usually the most popular track among the dirt road schedule, especially because it's recently been converted into free base content for all iRacing users. And number 6 is USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida. This is another track that all rookies who have ever driven an oval are probably familiar with as it is one of the base content tracks for the Street Stock series in iRacing. Unfortunately, what many users don't realize is that just a couple years after the launch of iRacing, USA International Speedway was permanently closed and demolished as its final race was held on August 2nd in 2008, just one year after hosting an ARCA series event. The track had also held races for the Cars Pro Cup Series and the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series, as well as being a common testing ground for NASCAR teams during the winter. Unfortunately, this business was not enough for the three quarter of a mile short track to survive the 2008 recession. And the track is now home to a development and warehouse is currently being built. And before we get to the next track, I have to check something really quick. ChatGPT, has Texas Motor Speedway been demolished yet? No. At number 5 we have the Phoenix Road Course, or in iRacing, the Legacy Phoenix Road Course. The 1.5 mile Phoenix Road Course is a roval that was constructed in 1991 reconfiguring the existing road course. The most notable races run on this configuration were from the Grand Am series in the early 2000s which visited the track a few times. This track has 12 turns, but in iRacing people are probably more familiar with it from the Rally Cross Course. The rally configuration utilizes many of the same infield turns that the road course does. Unfortunately for both the road and the rally cross course though, in 2011 with major remodeling happening at Phoenix once again, the infield road course was essentially taken out or converted into different parking areas. After yet another major renovation project in 2019, pretty much all was gone from the original legacy Phoenix road course, with all that's left in real life being the oval. So while the Legacy Phoenix Road Course is seldom used in iRacing, the Rally Course is much more commonly used, especially in the Rookie Beetle series. At number 5 we have Concord Speedway. Concord Speedway was located in Midland, North Carolina and started out its life in 1982 as a 4 tenths of a mile dirt track. But in 1991 it was reconfigured into what it is most known by today as the world's fastest half mile trioval. And after months and months of design, I'm finally proud to announce the Yi Yi Speedway, the world's fastest 7 tenths of a mile pentagon. The track held races from the NASCAR Wheel and Southern Modified Tour, and the Cars Super Late Model and Pro Late Model Tour, and was a very early piece of content for iRacing. Around 2011 though, the track's future became uncertain when weekly racing series died down, and in 2019 the track was sold and is currently being torn apart. Its legend will live on forever in iRacing though, as the short track that you either love or hate just because of how distinct it is from all other short tracks in the game. As for the title of World's Fastest Half Mile, well, I guess we can all go out and try to take that for ourselves now. At number 3 we have Oren Park Raceway. Oren Park was originally opened in 1962, but took on its distinct figure 8 Grand Prix shape in 1974. The racetrack held V8 supercars, Australian touring cars, and even held the Australian Grand Prix twice in the 1970s. Like many of the other entries on this list, Oren Park was a very early piece of content on iRacing. Its 1.6 mile Grand Prix circuit was the same circuit used by the V8 supercars up until the year before it closed. Because in 2010, the land for Oren Park Raceway was sold back to the government for them to create new housing developments on and apartment buildings. 
Looking over the original site for Orn Park today, there is no trace of the track anymore besides some street names that pay homage to some of the previous winners. But thankfully for sim racing fans, Orin Park was laser scanned and put into iRacing for people to enjoy in all sorts of series, including many of the rookie series, since once again, Orin Park is a piece of free base content in iRacing. Now let's just hope that the virtual land it sits on doesn't become valuable. Speaking of land value, at number two, we have Auto Club, aka Fontana Speedway. One of the newer ovals on the NASCAR circuit was Auto Club Speedway, built in the heart of the cookie cutter era, but Auto Club broke the mold a bit, being a 2 mile oval as opposed to a 1.5 mile. This track was very popular with fans, even up to its final race in 2023, but there was one problem. Auto Club was sitting on a lot of land in the middle of a blooming part of California. In 2020, the track got approval to reconfigure down to just a half mile paperclip oval that would sit nestled on the original front stretch, with the rest of the land being turned into developments. So while many NASCAR fans are very disappointed that they are seeing one of their favorite tracks go away, at the very least they can continue to race on this track in various iRacing series, with popular ones being the Next Gen series, the Arca series, and Off Season for other series like the Trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. And with a little bit of luck with the new configuration of California, maybe the new track will also be a hit. And at number one, we have Twin Ring Motegi Oval. On a bit of a side note, Twin Ring Motegi is actually my favorite oval track in the entire iRacing service. So if you see that as an option on one of the series that you run, be sure to check it out because it is not very popular, but it is one of the most fun tracks you'll ever drive on. But Motegi is a bit of an anomaly on this list because it was not demolished by humans. Originally built in 1997, Twin Ring Motegi included both a road course and an oval course that saw a lot of use from IndyCar as well as some exhibitions from NASCAR. Unfortunately, during the Great Japanese Earthquake of 2011, Twin Ring Motegi Oval was rendered unraceable by the damage that it had sustained. The oval has never seen racing on it since, but has seen on-track activity once in 2017, when Takuma Sato ran his IndyCar around the track at speed at a thank you event for Honda. This leads some people to speculate that in fact the oval is suitable for racing and that any repairs needed to it would be minor, as long as people would actually want to go back racing on it. But in the meantime, if you want to go racing on this oversized gateway or flat Darlington type racetrack, you can boot up iRacing and go try it out for yourself. Overall, it's very good to see that even though some of these tracks don't exist at all in real life anymore, they're still getting used to the fullest capacity inside of iRacing. In fact, this is probably the first time I've noticed that iRacing seems to make these tracks free on purpose. So if anyone from iRacing is watching, I just want to let them know that if they want to license out Yee Yee Speedway, I will sell it for very cheap, like five figures at the very most. You just got to hit me up, right? I